Has this opening ever changed? Like this, this part. Still the same, but um, I don't know. All right, back where we are. Yeah, yeah, the, the whole thing with the mother and, and everything. Okay. And the only reason why he can see it is probably because of the eye as well. Loving the mood so far. The slow, with the ambience with the rain and the color palette. Interesting, interesting. The camera angle is heavy. Some of the shots. Tokiko. She knows. She knows. She knows. And a change in her eyes. See, I, I, I always have my suspicions. Nice. Back to the Hishigata clinic. Bumping up and down and up and down. The animation's a bit... You know. Mmm. And yet your dad... Tells you not to. Probably doing some experiments. And I guess I will mention this. The place where Ryunosuke dies is somewhere around here. Right? And since this is the only thing that she copied, okay. what will we find? Oh. Uh -huh. Covered in blood? Whoa. Whoa. Kinda looks like the um like the big shadows. Like the form of it. Heteromorphic. I'm gonna look up Hiroko once this is, this is over. A crack where shadows can go. A photo album. これは必死ごとけの古い俺はも。おい、後ろ。どないした?うわ。で、君。お前やったらこの隙間入れるんちゃうかと。攻撃図解のあろよっちゃのは。明日の祭りで特約を奢ってよ。どうな?なんかあれ
How many did you eat? お腹が膨らんでるのって妊娠してるんとちゃうかお腹の中に何かあるオッケー。That's a cool ability. It's the ability to look at, you know, inside of things. Ah. Yeah. That's a place only shadows could go. So you're technically not supposed to go in there. Ah. Came prepared. でももしお前が先に死んだらお前は俺についてこられんのかいやウィスルドウノーダットフォシュールお前の戦力は百人力や失うリスクは避けたい不完は絵から本音を言えや今のが俺の本音なのいいやけど守られてくれるかウシオ
And a bunch of the baby ones as well. Oh, and they're all... They all don't have their heads, ew. Don't end the episode. In medieval times, Ebisu's origin came to be tied together with that of Hiroko, the first child of Izanagi and Izanami, who are creation deities of life and death. Okay, um, Hiroko was born without bones or in some stories without arms and legs, and due to his mother's trans transgression during the marriage ritual, uh, Hiriko struggled to survive, but as he could not stand, he was cast into the sea in a boat of reeds and before his third birthday. Um, Hiriko eventually washed ashore, possibly in Ezo, and was cared for by the Ainu Ebisu Saburo. And the Ainu are the indigenous people, um, including Hokkaido Island, Northeast Honshu. It is later believed that um, Ebisu was first arose as a god among fishermen and his origin as Hiroko was a much later conception. Hiroko was originally a god known as Koto Shironushi no Mikoto, son of Okuninushi. Who is also a god. One of the seven gods of fortune. Okay then. Back to the back to the episode. Reaction. Well, review. Um It was a solid episode. Definitely better than the previous episode, which I had a lot of gripes on. Um, this episode definitely has a better direction than the previous episode. There's a lot. There's definitely a, a lot more um, consistency, and the tone of the episode is definitely leaning more towards the darker mystery elements. And there's a lot more tension and. It's it's definitely effective, um, considering the setting in which this episode took place mostly, which is underground. Um, my only issue, and this has been, this has become an an apparent thing, um, and I'm probably gonna have to um, deal with it for the rest of the show, is that. Sometimes some of the comedy just doesn't work for me. Either it's just not funny, or it's just sort of out of place in at, at times. I don't know. I, it's not that I hate um, sprinkles of comedy in shows that are very serious and very dark. No, you can definitely do that, um, and it can be effective. But. I don't know, I just feel like there's a clear tonal difference between the serious stuff and the comedic stuff in, in this episode and this entire show, to be honest. It, it wasn't as egregious, as the, well, well, it's not really egregious, but I wasn't as annoyed before because um, in the... In the um, in the first couple of episodes, it's still setting up, it's still building up the foundations and, and whatever. Our characters are still in the blue, they don't know much about it, so they can still live and act freely and um, ignorantly, I would say. Um, but now, since we are a lot, since we are getting into the serious stuff, because we are getting into the more plot-heavy relevance of it all, I don't know, I, ju I, ju I just find sometimes it could be jarring. Especially when it comes to Ushio. Um, and I get that that is sort of his, I'm sorry, her character, that's, that's her quirk, that's her trait, but... 
sometimes it can get tiresome, to say the least. I'm not hating it. I'm just saying, I'm not hating it. I'm just saying, it has become something that is slowly building up in the back of my mind as something that I don't personally enjoy. It doesn't take away the overall experience because I am still definitely 100% on board and I am still hooked on the show and the story and I want to see where it's all going. But again, these small little um, minor nitpicks that are slowly becoming issues and not nitpicks is, 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 is getting to me. But either way, there's a couple of things that I do want to mention in this episode. Um, so let's start with the beginning, shall we? So, um, I love how we set up the mood of the episode already in the beginning of the sh in the beginning of the episode, using the rain, kind of desaturating the color palette, um, is a common trope and it's a common technique that a lot of filmmakers use to set up. Okay, this is the kind of emotion that you are going to be experiencing. This is when the story starts starts to shift and whatever. And while naturally, yes, this this is happening just be, just because it's raining, but it's also signifying that hey, yes, the plot is actually now moving forward. Plus, the context of the previous episode where we left off, which is when Heine, the mother, actually pops up out of nowhere and giving a mark on Shinpei kind of sets the foundation that yeah moving forward shit's about to get shit's about to get real and we're about to get into the meat of things the mystery element is finally about to be unraveled and sometimes maybe the answer isn't what we seek but again as i was saying love the opening segment of the of this episode and then we cut to here. Mio and Tokiko. So I've been very sus on Toki this entire time. Her actions has been very sus, in my opinion. And I know some people in the comments are saying, No, 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 she's, she's just doing this, she's just doing that. The reason why she, she acts like that is because of this, this, and that. I don't buy it. <laughs> I don't buy it one bit. I still go back to, what was it, episode 5. I still go back to episode 5. When the um, when the festival happened, when Shinpei walks up to the fiery festival, and Tokiko was the one who greets him, and she specifically says, "This is not." And my camera just died. Give me a sec. As I was saying, when Shinpei was going up to the fiery festival where everybody's dead, the first person he saw was Tokiko greeting him and Tokiko specifically says this is not why I dirtied my hands you don't say shit like dirtied my hands behind corpses of dead people and expect me to not suspect you for anything she knows something she knows something she Definitely knows something. She has a correlation with the shadows. I don't know what. I don't know why. But I know she does. And it all kind of ties in together. As I was saying, even in like the previous couple of episodes, when it was also revealed that Ushio's neck was covered, right? To hide the strangling um, marks. And who did that? Somebody at the Hishigata clinic, they say it's a nurse, but I am 75% confident that it's actually her. Who else could it be?
and somehow so doesn't know and we kind of get confirmation on that um during in this episode when so was given the flashback let me see if i can find it um here a flashback where so got into trouble for trying to get into his dad's own clinic now why would the father not allow so to get in obviously there's a secret that he wants to hide the shadows and he wants to make sure you know his his son his child isn't involved in in any way okay good i understand that but what about the daughter what about tokiko What's her deal? Huh? What's her deal? What is it? Why is the camera focusing on her? These are all subtle filmmaking techniques of the show Don't Tell. And I really appreciate that. Like, it's giving you hints. It's telling you, hey, 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 look. Something's off. Something's wrong. We're not gonna tell you yet. But we're giving you an idea of what it is. Please don't go to the festival tomorrow. That is exactly the words that, he, that she says right here. Can I ask you a favor? Stay with me tomorrow. Don't go to the festival. Gee, I wonder why. I wonder why. She knows. She knows something's gonna happen in the festival. We have never seen her this emotional before. Throughout the, the entire show, she has always, always has this same exact expression where... Where it's just closing her eyes with a very calm and concerned face like this. What are you hiding, Tokiko? What are you hiding? Hiding from hiding the truth? You don't want to let your real emotion come out? Afraid to see your friends dying? And yet here, she pleads, please don't go to the festival tomorrow. Mio's confused. Why? What's gonna happen tomorrow? What's gonna happen to the, in, in the festival? Somebody came in and Tokiko's whole expression, whole, her whole demeanor changes. Who is this? We don't know. Suddenly, Tokiko changes completely. This isn't the shy Tokiko that we all know. No, this is somebody else. This is... This is the real Tokiko, I would say. That whole shy, timid, calm Tokiko is all a facade, in my opinion. This is the real Tokiko. Miura from Wakayama's Northern Station. A police sergeant. I thought there's only one police officer in this whole island. And then they cut away, and then we never see them again. Hmm. Hey, I'm just saying. I've been sus of Tokiko since day one. This episode is just making me more suspicious of her. And I think it's pretty obvious that yes, she knows something. She and her dad know something. I mean, her dad. Dr. Hishigata obviously probably knows that the festival is going to happen. I mean, hey, the, the dude has a shadow living in his clinic, and we don't know who, who or what that shadow is. I think I've talked about this in episode 5, or whatever episode that was, but I think I've talked about how 
what if that shadow that is in Dr. Hishigata's clinic is somebody related to the Hishigatas? Correct me if I'm wrong, but we never really see their mother. Do we now? Like their actual mother. What if the shadow in that clinic in the wheelchair is so and Tokiko's mother or at least a shadow copy of her is that too much for me to ask is, 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 that, is that kind of going overboard a bit I don't know but I feel like whatever it is that Dr. Hishigata is planning and what Tokiko is planning or what she knows 100% has correlation with the festival and whatever the mother is doing, hi Nei, whatever she is doing is something that is aligned with whatever these two characters are trying to achieve. Not necessarily the same but it is possible that whatever it is that Haine is doing could potentially help Dr. Hishigata's own plan. We shall see. We shall see. But that is a storyline that I am very much interested in and the fact that we are seeing this brings my hopes up. I want to see more. Good stuff. So we are skipping a bit, so we get into the clinic, um, Ushio uses her shadow powers and goes around and finds some shit, and then we finally see the statue of Hiroko, or Ebisu, I've talked about this before, um, What I was just reading basically in, in Wikipedia, heteromorphic. So we go underground. Some cute moments, some blushing moments, some will they, will they, won't moments. And then we meet this horrendous thing. What the fuck is this? It's a baby with half its, its head off. Which again, I mean, I mean, this is like basically the child of the mother, right? But I guess it's not fully formed yet. It's not like fully developed, fully evolved, still in its infancy stages. And definitely one that, well, I mean, it has intelligence, but not like the others. Um, the action in this entire sequence was fine. Um, nothing particularly amazing or great. It's just fine. It's it's what I would expect an action scene would go in a show that isn't um, action focus. So. Not mad at it at all. I think it's fine. Could have been better, but it's better than the previous episode, that's for sure. Um, Shinpei talks to Shinpei. I asked in the episode if there is more to this than meets the eye. See what I did there. Um, but yeah, I was I was asking if there's more to this, or if this is just um, Shinpei talking to himself as an internal thought and, and nothing to do with like the powers or, or whatever. And I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with the powers, it's just Shinpei. It's, it's just a visualization of Shinpei talking to himself. Um, kinda cool. We stop the shadow, we move on. 
we find out that Ushio's wounds are still there from the previous attack, which is very concerning. Um, and Ushio, of course, hides it from Shinpei, which could be a problem later on, especially by the end of the episode where we are left with our main trio surrounded by a bunch of baby shadows, which could be a problem, and Ushio is not really in the best of shape. So I'm kind of concerned about Ushio, and we also hear a gunshot, I forgot about that, we also hear a gunshot. So, I would immediately assume that yeah, that is probably Hizuru up there fighting. We don't know for sure, but who else has a shotgun or or, or a gun in the show besides Hizuru and um, Nezu, the old grandpa? And then the episode ends. That's pretty much it. Um, I don't know. I feel like the main trio will still be alive next episode. I don't think we're gonna have a reset just yet. Um, especially with the amount of information that they have collected so far. Um, it would feel a bit of a waste to reset now. Plus, if they do want to reset, it has to be an um, it has it has to carry emotion, right? Because when you reset, it has to it needs to feel like it, it, the audience needs to also feel frustrated when if Shinpei dies, because that's essentially losing a lot of information. And the more info they collected, the harder and the more um, hurtful it is if. He does, in fact, goes back in time because that just means that those entire progress, that entire um, storyline where where Shinpei bonds together with Ushio and bonds together with So, is lost, and he needs to do it all over again. So, with that being said, that's pretty much it for my reaction and my discussion for Summertime Rendering Episode Ten. Pretty good episode. Um. Not as great as I had hoped, but pretty good nonetheless. Um, we're definitely building up to the, sorry, for the second half of the show, which will be coming up in like the next two weeks. Oh, I'm gonna got the hiccups. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoy my reaction and my discussion. If you do, hit the like, subscribe. If you haven't already, share the video, and I will see you all next time for the next episode of Summertime Rendering. Take care, guys.